Hey everyone, I was asked by a couple people on how exactly I make my sock patterns. Now that you have your machine, you're probably wondering, how do I make a sock that will fit my specific foot? So I have a lovely drawing of a sock here, and we can see that this is the toe part. This area here is the foot. Here is the heel, and this would be your cuff or whatever goes up from your ankle. The basic formula on how to make a sock is to find out your shoe size, and then also to measure the toe and the heel. You're going to need a chart that has the different shoe sizes on there. There's, I have women's, children's, and men's shoes. I'm sure there's plenty of charts online. For this example, I'm just going to say we're going to use a men's size 9 shoe. So it's 10.55 inches. That should be the length from your heel to your toe. Now what we have to do, we have shoe size here. So we have 10.55. 10.55. Now the toe and the heel. This one... Oh, I found some online. It's like, oh, the toe and the heel is always two inches. It's usually two inches. And I just always went with that and was wondering why my socks were all turning out wonky. Some were too long, some were too short. So what you really need to do is knit a test, maybe a test sock or a test toe or heel. Uh, maybe even like this is a sock here. There's the toe, the heel, and it goes up into the cuff here. You might just want to knit maybe this much of the sock just so you can actually measure how big your, uh, your uh, toe is. So for this, if you lay it out flat, you're going to see that your toe starts here and it ends right about here at this, uh, this angle. So you would take your measuring device of some kind, lay it out and measure roughly that distance. This one's about, I'd say this one's about two inches. Uh, if your gauge, not your gauge, if your tension is looser or tighter, this will actually change the length of the toe. Looser tension will give you a longer toe, tighter tension will give you a shorter toe. So just be aware of that. If all of a sudden your socks are turning out way too big or way too small, you might want to make sure that your heel measurement and your toe measurement are correct. The heel and toe are made the exact same way, so the distance that you have here for your toe will be the exact same for your heel. So if ours is 2 inches, and we have 10.55 as a shoe size, we'll take that minus the toe, which is 2 inches, minus 2 inches. And that gives us a total of 6.55. I'm writing at an angle. Now to figure out how many cranks we need to do to make this, this distance right here is 6.55. We've already calculated that the heel is two and the toe is two. And so this is the distance here we need to figure out how many cranks to actually complete this foot part. So we have our foot times the gauge will equal the number of cranks. So this is where a test watch, let's say you've knit your test toe or your test, um, test sock. Or even if you've just gone and made a test swatch like this. If you take it off the machine, lay it up flat, I advise you to make at least, I'd probably say maybe a bit longer than this so it's easier to measure because the uh, ends curl up. Then you lay it out with your measuring tape here and you're going to count how many stitches, let's go closer, how many stitches are in one inch. You can just count the little, they almost look like little v-shapes or the little holes. You can count those. And calculate your gauge. So we're going to pretend for argument's sake that mine is 12 rows per inch. So if we have our 6.55 inch foot, we're going to times by the gauge which is 12 rows per one inch. Do the math and you get, you get 78.6 rows. That right there is how many cranks you need to do. Usually you say round up, so it's 78.6. We're gonna say it's 79 rows. If it's uh, 78.1, then just stick with 78. And that's how many cranks you will have to turn your machine to give you the length of the foot.